Hello and welcome to the first in this new set of vlogs where I'll be having a quick look at different photography techniques and accessories. In this first video I'm going to be taking a quick look at graduated filters but something tells me you knew that anyway. So to start off with then there's two types of graduated filter the hard type and the soft type. Now this obviously isn't to do with their construction because they're both hard plastic in their design. It's actually to do with the graduation line from neutral density to clear filter. If we look at the two filters on the light box, we'll see that the filter on the left, the hard grad, has quite a defined graduation line. It goes from neutral density to clear filter very quickly. Whereas the filter on the right, the soft grad, has a more softer, less defined graduation. So how do you choose which filters to use? Well, it depends on the situation. In most situations, a hard grad will be ideal because you'll have the land ending in a nice horizon in the distance where the sky begins. Therefore, you can bring the graduated filter down to meet that horizon line. A soft grad is more useful where a subject is breaking that horizon line and going into the sky where you're trying to filter. This could be a mountain, a tree, a building, anything like that. Anything where putting a hard graduated filter across that horizon is going to show up in that subject. Now you probably notice that these filters aren't cheap and the more expensive ones are expensive because of the quality control that they go through. These filters are neutral density filters. They're meant to be neutral. So a cheaper one with less quality control will probably have a, a color cast to it that puts the color cast into the sky, which obviously you don't want. You can remove it, but it's not ideal. So the more money you pay, the more neutral the filter should be. And as well as being hard and soft type graduated filters, there are different densities as well. The three main ones are a 0.3, which is one stop, a 0.6, which is two stops, and 0.9, which is three stops. This means this is the amount of light that these filters will hold back from reaching the camera's sensor. And of course you can use these filters in combination. So you could add a 0.3 filter to a 0.9 filter and that would make four stops in total, which is ideal for extreme backlit situations. So which filters do you buy? Well, having both sets will cover every eventuality, but obviously that's gonna be a lot of expense. So I would advise a 0.6 hard grad as your first filter to buy. This is probably the most used in landscape photography and will cover you for most situations. You could then add a 0.9 either soft or hard grad uh, when funds allow. And obviously which filter you go for depends on the kind of subjects you're shooting. A 0.9 soft grad is probably more useful in the city where there's lots of buildings coming into the sky at regular intervals. Whereas in the landscape these kind of subjects only break the horizon every now and again. Now once you have your filters how do you use them? How do you know which filter to use? The easiest way of doing it is to point your camera down to cover the land that you're shooting and take a meter reading off of that. And when you've done that, point the camera up at the sky and take a meter reading from that area. So if you have a meter reading at f8 at 1 60th of a second for the land and then a meter reading of f8 at 2 50th of a second for the sky, that's a two stop difference. So you know you need to use a two stop filter. If the meter reading for the sky was 1 500th of a second, that's three stops difference, and therefore a three stop filter is required. But there is another way of working out which filter to use, and it's quite easy. It's a bit of a rule of thumb, but I found it works really well. If the sun's behind you, you often find that a 0.3 one stop grad is more than enough to filter the sky ahead of you. If the sun's off to your left or right, which is usually the best place for the sun to be when you're shooting landscapes, then more often than not, the two stop grad is the one you need to use. If you shoot it into the light, especially at sunrise or sunset, then a three stop 0.9 filter is usually the one to go for. Now you may be thinking, why do you even need filters in this digital age when you can just replicate it in Photoshop? Well, it's true, you can, but You've bought your expensive camera, you've bought your quality lenses, and I hope you've bought a nice solid tripod as well. Well, the filters are all part of that essential equipment for landscape photography. Don't think of scrimping on the filters, they're an essential part of your accessories. The other thing is that as a landscape photographer, I presume you like being outdoors, you like being out in the landscape, capturing the beauty of our world. Therefore, wouldn't you rather spend more time out in the field, getting things right in camera, rather than spending more time behind the computer, correcting things? I know I would. So there you are, 
a quick guide to graduated filters. If you want to find out more about graduated filters, then head over to my website, check out my E6 subscription, where you'll find technique e-guides on this accessory and many others. And if you want to find more about using these filters within the city, then check out the video that I did for Lee filters. I'll put the link below in the description. Till next one, bye for now. And if you want to find out about using these and if you want to find about and if you want to find about and if you want to find out about the and if you want to find out more about the and if you want to find out more about